Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen. Welcome to this Dialogue Web Extra. We're talking about the National Park Service here in Idaho. And joining me in my Moscow studio is Gary Summers, the superintendent of the Nez Perce Historical Park. Gary, thank you for being here. We're glad to be here, Joan. And joining us in our Pocatello studio is Doug Neighbor, superintendent of Craters of the Moon National Monument and Preserve. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And joining me here in the Boise studio is Wallace Keck, superintendent of the City of Rocks. Good evening. I appreciate you joining us. Okay, I, this is this is a little more relaxed than our live show. I want to ask mm -hmm. a question. What's the, what would surprise people about each of your individual parks? City of Rocks, what would surprise I, people? Well, I tell you, the, the City of Rocks is well hidden until you kind of come through a little gap in the valley and suddenly there it is. And I just enjoy touring new people that have not seen it and just getting that ah, kind of experience. <laughs> so I, I would say the scenery itself is just amazing. And Gary, how about up north? What surprises people about the Nez Perce Historical Park? I think the thing that surprises people most is that we're, we're much more than just a visitor center. We have many different units that are spread over the, the countryside that tell a vast story of the history of that part of Idaho. And an awful lot of the history that happened in the early, oh, late, Eight, late 18th century happened in our park. So um, that's what surprises people the most. And Doug, what surprises people about craters? I think the, the vast open areas and how little of the monument and preserve is used by the public. I mean, you can go out there and not see another person all day long. Uh, so it's, it's size, I think. I was always surprised that some of it's not yet mapped, that there's parts of this area that, have, that people haven't actually explored. Well, once you try to walk across some of that <laughs> very rough lava, <laughs> you give up fairly quickly. <laughs> well, since we're talking about national parks, let me ask each of you, if you have a favorite national park and you can't park a unit and you can't pick your own, you have to pick somebody else. Wallace? I'm going to have to go with Canyonlands. Okay. Yeah. Um, like most early uh, conservationists you read like uh, Desert Solitaire and yeah. just get fascinated with the landscape and then having visited it and backpacked it it's truly spectacular. And and Doug how about you? What's your favorite other than your own? Of course. The National Park of American Samoa. There you uh, go. It's just a beautiful island in the South Pacific and you know it's a park created out of communal lands from the the native Samoan and their villages. And Gary? I would have to say Olympic National Park because of its great variety from the seacoast to the rainforest to the high mountains and forests and glaciers. Most people don't realize that the parks here in Idaho, the National Park Service areas, are open year round that you don't necessarily think about. Now we're heading into the fall uh, and winter. Let me ask each of you what's available for people if they want to head out later in the year, first part of January. Uh, let's, uh, let's go up to Moscow. Well, our park is open year-round. The visitor center is open year-round, um, especially as we're down in the, in the Lewis-Clark Valley. That's one of the nicest places to be in <laughs> Idaho in January. You do, yes, you do have nice weather. Yes, we do. That's the nice time to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doug, how about you in, at the creators? What's well, of course, in the winter, we become a, a black and white world. And with that snowfall, we end up grooming our seven-mile loop trail for cross-country skiing, both for skate skiing and classical uh, skiing. And we put in a lot of snowshoe trails for the visitors. Uh, and, you know, you just get to get out there and experience uh, just a, a crystal clear, quiet, you know, day. And, and it's just a totally different experience where you'd find and other places in Idaho. And the City of Rocks. Well, we haven't even started our fall foliage yet, so yeah. w the season is yet to come, the really nice season where you can hike uh, and not see another person. Come winter, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, but I've, I've got to tell you, winter is when the silent City of Rocks really earns its name. It is deafening silence. <laughs> <laughs> and any, anything last pitch for people who've never been to your park? We'll just go back around, let's start. Well, 66% of 100,000 visitors can't be wrong. We, they call us a destination park, and it's worth the drive. They come from all over the world and uh, all over the United States. So uh, whether you're a climber or you just want to see some grand scenery in southern Idaho that you did not think 
was there, you'll be surprised. And how do you get to the City of Rocks? The best way is to take the interstate to the Declo exit, which is near Burley, head south on Highway 77 through the towns of Declo, Albion, Elba, Almo. Almo is our gateway community. Okay. And Craters of the Moon, how do you get there? Uh, the north end is where, there, where the National Park Service Visitor Center is. And uh, you can get that through Highway 2026. Uh, either go through Arco or Cary. Um, you just get off the interstate and follow all the, the brown informational signs <laughs> and they point to Craters of the Moon. Hmm. And why should they come in the winter? Uh, I think it's good, easy cross-country skiing. Uh, but also very low visitation uh, and unfortunately you don't get to see uh, a lot of the, the volcanic features because they're covered by snow but it does just make it uh, a beautiful scenery. It is absolutely gorgeous in the wintertime. And, and there then is first, how do you get to your park? Well, if you're coming from the north or south you get to it right off of Highway 95 if you're coming from the east or west, you get to it off of Highway 12. Um, our closest communities are Lapway and Lewiston. Well, and we encourage everyone to go out and visit Idaho's national parks. They're wonderful. We appreciate you joining us here for this Dialogue Web Extra. There's lots more information on our website. Check it out. And join us here next time for another Dialogue Web Extra.